Right now, there's a secret war over AI. Not the United States versus China, not AI companies versus copyright holders, but instead over the development of artificial intelligence itself. On one side, you have Google, OpenAI, and X. On the other, you have Meta, DeepSeek, and Mistral. What is this war, you ask? Well, this is the war between the supporters of cloud AI and local AI. There are two ways AI models are operated. If it's closed source and limited to only run on internet servers, then it's constituted as cloud AI. The AI model is only accessible in the cloud. This is opposed to open source AI models that can run locally on computers you control, hence local AI. Each approach brings unique advantages and disadvantages to both you, the consumer, and the businesses of the companies that make AI models. So what do these two factions have to offer? We'll first look at cloud AI. This includes Google's Gemini, X's Gronk, and all of OpenAI's models. A big advantage here is that you can access it anywhere. If you want to ask ChatGPT for some questionable images of your favorite anime character at 3 a.m. in the desert in Morocco, you can. Next, on top of being able to access AI resources from anywhere, you're able to access it with anything. As long as you have an internet connection, you don't need anything more powerful than a smartwatch. All the computation is done by someone else. You don't have to deal with it. Don't judge me. That brings us to the companies that actually operate these giant AI supercomputers. What do they benefit from allowing you to use their precious GPUs? Two things. A, they can charge you for this service. While a free option usually exists, there's always some sort of paid subscription tier. They earn margin on this as their cost will be lower than what you pay, and thus obviously they make money. B, by running all the requests, responses, and interactions of their AIs through their own servers, they're able to collect a lot of data from the user. Data is very useful. If you ask an AI about the best weightlifting equipment, for example, then that company would theoretically be able to sell that knowledge of your interest in weightlifting equipment to advertisers. Now, the companies I've mentioned so far, OpenAI, Google, and X, all claim that they don't sell your AI data to third parties or advertisers. But like, <laughs> come on. Even if that's 100% true right now, all it takes is a change in the terms of service for them to sell everything you've ever said to ChatGPT. The other way they can leverage your data is using it to train slash improve their models. You provide them with some data and feedback as you use it, they are able to provide you with some better AI models. That's a win-win in my opinion. So that's cloud slash server-based AI. What about local AI? Local AI is built upon a different principle. You operate it. Models like Meta's Llama and DeepSeek's R1 use a computer that you provide. If your computer sucks, then it's gonna suck. Definitely a disadvantage. In the same vein, if you're not around your computer or you don't have remote access, then you can't use it in the desert in Morocco. But what you gain is control. You don't have to worry about what happens to your access to artificial intelligence or what happens to your data. No one can take it away from you. What do you think you're doing? Stealing my property? Uh, I'm just here for the anime pictures. This is especially important to organizations such as the military or defense companies, or even someone like Apple that doesn't want their iPhone 20 designs leaking on the internet. Keeping everything close to the chest within your complete control, both in terms of data and physically, is a non-negotiable for many. Another perk of local run AI is that because it's almost exclusively open source, the models can be customized to a very high degree. DeepSeek's R1 has been forked an amazing 11,000 times on GitHub, which means that over 11,000 different variations have been created by people based on only one AI model. While some of these are worthless, others allow people to tackle specific problems or use them in weird situations that simply wouldn't be possible with locked down cloud AI. But the downside of everything being open source and free to access is exactly that. The AIs are open source and free to access. How are companies supposed to make money when I can go to GitHub and download software that costs millions and millions of dollars to produce, seemingly without any way for them to make money from me? Well, they don't. From a purely capitalistic perspective, Meta and DeepSeek are throwing their money into a pit of fire. That's the major downside of local AI. It's hard for a business to make money from it. However, that doesn't mean it's a bad decision. There's a good reason that they do this. They're the underdogs. OpenAI has been the de facto AI company since they released ChatGPT in 2023. Other tech companies want to follow in their footsteps. Some, like the cloud AI companies I talked about earlier, Google and X, are doing pretty much the same strategy as OpenAI. Create a new AI model, let the public access it online, and pray to the heavens that people sign up for the paid subscription. Meta and DeepSeek and others are attacking in a different way. 
create an AI model and spread it as far and wide as you can. If that means making it open source, sure. If that means creating guides to help people learn how to use it, why not? Instead of being concerned over the profitability of this business right now, they're playing a longer game by focusing solely on adoption. The more people and businesses that use the product, the brighter they think their future looks as an artificial intelligence company. That's the edge I think local AI companies are going for and why they even exist despite the admittedly horrendous profitability. This war over AI's future is as much a battle between consumers and organizations who want to keep control over their AI systems as it is a battle between companies who want to outcompete each other. The former is why there's demand for local AI and the latter is why there's supply. As for who will win this war, I personally hope that neither side wins. I don't want a future where AI usage is limited to either of these sides. I know it's cliche to say, but as is often the case in the real world, each side has advantages and a reason for existing. People want to be able to access AI models conveniently while also having the option for them to be very secure and specialized depending on the situation. And hey, pitting tech companies against each other is only going to increase the rate in which progress is made. A win for us consumers. So next time your crazy uncle starts talking about the AI war, you know the war that's really going on.